Welcome back to my channel. I'm Chris and today we're touring an apartment that is the second tallest skyscraper in Seattle and is the tallest residential building on the west coast. I'm talking about the residences at Rainier Square. And actually this is a video that one of you suggested so I went out and had to do this because I didn't realize that this building was the second tallest so thank you for the recommendation. Rainier Square is one of the newest skyscrapers in Seattle and is actually set for completion later this year although it's already in use. It's 850 feet tall with 189 luxury apartments. The residential apartments actually start on the 40th floor and continue up to the 58th floor. So far, the apartments in this building are the highest and the most expensive in Seattle, and today I'll show you three separate one-bedroom apartments. The square footage ranges from 700 to about 1,100 square feet, and the price for each ranges anywhere from 4,500 to up to 6,100 per year, although that mostly depends on the view and the floor. And at the end, if you want to stick around, I'll also show you some of the video of the amenities and lobby areas in this building. So stick around for the entire video if you want to see what 4,000 to 6,000 can get you in Seattle's tallest apartment building. The first room that we're going to look at is a one bedroom, one bathroom with a den. It's on the 49th floor, is about 1,080 square feet, has a northeast view, and costs anywhere from 4,500 to 5,800 per year. It has large windows that bring in a lot of sunlight even when cloudy. And right at the entrance you have a den with honestly enough space to fit a twin size bed or even a large desk. It also has an attached closet for a washer and dryer and in total it's over 100 square feet which by itself would be a luxury apartment by New York standards. This totally could be used as a guest bedroom or gaming room or even an Airbnb if those rent prices are a little too scary. A nice surprise about this apartment as well is the inclusion of a guest restroom. It's small and really only has the essentials but I appreciate having a separate room for guests. And moving on we have the view of the apartment. From the 49th floor you have an excellent view of the Olympic Mountain Range. On a clear sunny day you can see the entirety of the Olympic Mountains and also get a great view of the streets of Seattle. Each apartment here is guaranteed an amazing view and is the main reason behind the cost of the apartment because like I said before it all starts on the 40th floor so you'll never be below the 40th. Turning back we have the kitchen with an island. There are plenty of cabinets and storage areas for whatever you need, but most luxury apartments give a little more countertop space. This place feels like it's a little bit more cramped for a luxury apartment. Although I do appreciate the same apartment layout comes in a darker color. Also, instead of an electric stove seen in many apartments, Rainier Square gives you a gas stove, and I definitely prefer cooking over fire than a glass surface. And I know that I said this place doesn't have a lot of space, and I do say that this kitchen does feel a little bit smaller, but it has plenty of cabinet space, so really you won't ever run out of storage areas for your spices or groceries or really whatever you want to put in there. So while you might not have as much countertop space as a typical luxury apartment, you still have all the cabinet space that any top apartment would have. And just adjacent to the kitchen is the bedroom. It has the same great views and enough room for a king size bed and maybe a chair or two. One thing that I really appreciate about this bedroom is just the amount of privacy that you get. You get a really great view, but what also comes with that is nobody's really staring at you. I could wake up in the morning looking absolutely horrible, but I could know that nobody else could stare into my bedroom because there's no other buildings the same height or taller. So in addition to that great view, you get pretty much the best privacy of any apartment in Seattle. It's connected to a large dressing room with hopefully enough room for all of your clothes. In my case, it's more than enough, but I cycle through the same shirts every couple weeks, so I'm a little biased. Otherwise, the bathroom is connected to the dressing room. Nothing much to say about it, although I honestly feel like every Seattle apartment built in the last 10 years uses the exact same company to build their bathrooms. They all seem really similar. I'm a little bit surprised they don't have a bathtub in this apartment, but at least they give you this extra little space in the bathroom. Not sure what it could be used for. Maybe you want to put a plant that doesn't need any light there, or I don't know, whatever you want, I guess. Anyway, that wraps up the first apartment. Let's jump to the next. This next unit is almost identical to the last one. It's a little smaller at 987 square feet, has a slightly different layout with the den, has an east facing view, and doesn't have as large a closet. 
On a clear sunny day, the view from this apartment would be unbeatable. I'm already imagining putting a dining table by the large window or a couch and watching the sunrise with a cup of coffee. It's expensive, but the views are amazing. In this unit, instead of facing the Olympic Mountains, you get a great view of the Cascade Mountains. Plus, if you look carefully, you can even see Bellevue. Otherwise, the kitchen, bedroom, dressing room, and bathroom are virtually identical. Uh, well, not even virtually. They are actually very identical. But there's a noticeable difference between the dens, actually. In this apartment, the den is the same size, but it doesn't have an attached closet or washer dryer. It does have a small closet, but that contains mostly HVAC material, so it's really only there for maintenance workers. And finally, the guest bathroom is a little bit different. I actually like the layout of the guest bathroom here better than the previous unit. That's mostly because I don't like sitting with a mirror in front of me when I'm on the toilet. You know, I really gotta have that privacy from myself. Of course, I know that I said that this apartment has pretty much the exact same layout as the first apartment we toured, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but as you can see, the kitchen is essentially the same. Same coloring, you also have the option for a dark kitchen, so it does feel a little bit smaller, but then again, it has some pretty good lighting and plenty of cabinets for whatever storage you need, and of course a gas stove, which is definitely appreciated. And switching on over, the bedroom has a great view of the Cascade Mountains. Pretty much the same layout as the first apartment again. Same thing with the closet as well. Nothing much to say. I believe the closet in the first one is slightly larger than this one, but that's just because the first apartment is a more expensive unit. And a quick overview of the bathroom. It has two sinks and a shower without a bathtub. It's overall the exact same layout as the first apartment, so we could go ahead and finish up here and go over to the third. And this brings us to the final apartment. This one is quite a bit different from the other two new units, but has the same square footage of the first apartment and has much more window area. It has a washer and dryer right at the entrance, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but each apartment in this building gets a full size washer and dryer, because sometimes in Seattle they'll give you a European style which is about half the size, which is what I have, so it's nice to know that you have a regular size washer and dryer and you could wash a full load of laundry and also has a guest bathroom as well. This bathroom is the same as the first, so you'll have to get used to making awkward eye contact with yourself while using the restroom. The cool thing about this unit is that even though it's technically a one bedroom, the den might as well be considered a second bedroom. It has a great view, relative privacy, room for a twin and maybe even a queen if you really squeeze it in there, and it has its own closet. It's definitely my favorite den out of all three apartments, and honestly, it could be used for anything. Near the den is the kitchen, which is also my favorite kitchen of each apartment. It has the same amount of counter space, but it feels much more open. I like how the kitchen is linear, which is something I prefer and gives more room for multiple cooks. Also, the island is larger, so you have plenty of space to present your food. As you can probably tell, this is one of the darker variants of the kitchen. It does come in the lighter color, which is a clip that I had earlier, but I actually really like the dark color with the lighting that it has. The warm lighting contrasting off the darker colors looks really good. Plus, if you ever make a spill like any turmeric or spices on the wall, I guess it won't show up as well, although there is plenty of white left that you could stain, but that's totally besides the point. To me, just because it has a more linear style, it feels larger and I feel like I'd have more room to cook here. So overall, I like this kitchen a lot better than the kitchen in the other two apartments. Also, the view from the living room and kitchen is a southeast view, so on a clear day you'll be able to see both the Columbia Tower, the tallest building in Seattle, and Mount Rainier, the tallest mountain in Washington. Just based on what we've seen so far, this unit's already my favorite. And I'll go ahead and give you a quick walk of the bathroom, dressing room, and bedroom, but like most units in Rainier Square, these are pretty much the same as the other two so I don't really have anything new to say about it. Otherwise, this last unit has a great view, the best den, and my favorite kitchen out of all the other units in this video. That being said, let me know which apartment you liked the best. I thought each were interesting and offered something different, although, like I said before, the last apartment was definitely my favorite. For this final part, I actually want to show you some of the views from the lobby of the apartment and give you a quick look at the common spaces. Like I said before, the main lobby of the residences starts on the 40th floor. This means that even from the lobby, you have some of the best views of the city. If anything, I feel like some of these views are better because it makes you feel closer to the city and you still get those long distance views. The lobby area itself also encompasses the common area and is actually two stories in total. There are multiple hangout areas throughout and each offers great views of the city. 
They also have their own meeting rooms you can use, a reading room, a bar, and even a crafting room. I honestly don't think I'd use most of those, but it's still cool to have. They really do have it all here. Although, unlike many apartment buildings in Seattle, they don't actually have a rooftop deck. I was actually surprised they don't have some sort of rooftop, or at least some sort of outside access. But I guess you're already so high up, so you don't really need one, you already have great views. And they definitely make up for a lack of rooftop with all the views that they have and the multiple hangout areas, and really all the amenities that they have. Overall, I thought this was one of the coolest apartment buildings in Seattle. I was impressed by the views, and love how the building is right downtown within all the action of the city. While it has some of the most expensive apartments in Seattle, it also has some of the best views of any apartment building in the city. If you want some of the best views in Seattle and don't mind the price, this is probably the place for you. But let me know what you think. Even if you don't like the apartments themselves, you can't deny that the skyscraper is beautiful and will definitely become an icon within the Seattle skyline. The architecture of the building alone deserves its own video, but that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, or if you have any future video suggestions, let me know in the comments. With that, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.